Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Living the Newcomb Life. I'm Jerry. Today's episode is going to be all about trellising my peppers and tomatoes and pruning them. So stand by. Okay guys, so this is my Roma tomato in my five gallon bucket um, that I have growing. And as you can see there, this is two plants that have come up so ideally you only want one plant but every now and then you're going to get two and in the grand scheme of things it's not that big of a deal they can grow in tandem like this you just have to know how to prune them correctly so I'm going to show you how to do that right now so you can see that I have them strung up on my garden twine trellis right now so they're not going to go anywhere but you basically need to get rid of any branches that are going to be below where your blooms are. So there aren't any blooms on this plant yet and obviously I'm not going to take every limb off of the plant right now but one of the things that you want to make sure that it's going to do is that it's going to breathe. So the best way to do that is you want to take away any of the branches that are facing on the inside. Real quick too, I don't know if you guys can see these this little plant right here, this little plant right here, you see how they're in the crook of the branches? So those are called suckers. You want to make sure that you remove any and all suckers. In this case, these are tiny. So you just pinch them off with your fingernails. Um, if they get to where they're a pretty good size though, like you can see this one right here on my cherry tomato plant. See that sucker right there? that's a pretty big sucker now I can still pinch that off and let it die or if you have an option and you have somewhere else that it can grow you could actually let that get a little bit of size to it that that's almost the size that you want and you can actually take a knife or cutting shears to take that off at the bottom there and actually just put that in dirt and believe it or not it'll grow a whole new tomato plant so um, that might be an option that I might do. I don't know yet, but uh, don't really have anywhere else that I can plant it, so probably not. So going back to my Roma tomato plant, I'm gonna get rid of all of the suckers. You just pinch them off with your fingernails. And any branches that are facing on the inside of your plant. So like definitely this one right here. Knife. I'm just going to cut that branch off right there. Here's a sucker right here. Don't know if you can see that. Get rid of that. So this branch is a little questionable. If you can kind of bring it back this way, you could keep it. But this is actually on the shade side of my plant. So I'm probably not going to keep that one. And so you can see right there that it really opens that space up and as the plant starts to grow and start to get blooms as soon as you have where your blooms are you can take off every limb below those blooms and the purpose of that is instead of putting energy in these branches that aren't going to produce anything it's going to force all of that energy up and it'll um, Make sure that it gets as much energy that it needs to get your your tomatoes going so that you'll have the biggest crop you can. All of these lower branches right here, they can all go. I'm going to probably leave these on right here just to kind of give it some depth and help it settle on the garden trellis. This branch right here, because it's facing the inside, I'm going to take that off. And you can see how it opens that up really nice. This branch right here will I'll probably eventually take off, but not right now. And so that right there is how you, you want to um, groom your, your tomato plants if you have two in the same pot and I'll show you how to groom when you only have one 
Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is I am going to hang up my garden trellis twine holders. <laughs> so we're at the top of my five gallon bucket grow table and this is the metal bar that I put on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use three zip ties to hang this up and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So these two right here is what is actually going to hold it up and then this one right here is what the garden trellis twine holder is going to actually hang on to. Then I just tighten that up so it's the same width as the holder there. And tighten these up. Kind of straighten it up so it looks good. And there you go. So what I have to do next is um, I'm going to get my trellis twine on the holder, tie it to the base of the plant, bring it back up here and snap it in place. All right, guys, so you're on the other side of my grow table now and I'm grooming my cherry tomato. I don't know if you guys can tell, I've got some blooms right here and blooms right here. So technically everything from down below needs to go but i'm going to re-trellis my cherry tomato plant because i just put my garden twine holders up on the top there so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to re-trellis these and then i'll groom it so i'm taking all of these lower branches off so I can tie my trellis twine to the plant. These little ones you can just pinch off with your fingers. But these larger limbs you should always use either garden shears or in my case a pocket knife or something like that. Okay, so I have two separate stems here. So I'm gonna do just like I did with my Roma plant. I'm gonna tie it off on the bottom. You don't necessarily wanna tie it off so that it restricts the stem. You wanna give it a little bit of space so that it'll have space to grow. So I'm just tying just a regular knot here, no big deal. And again, you don't want to have any kind of a slip knot or anything like that because you don't want to put pressure on the stem itself because that'll choke it out and make it die. You just want it to be very stable.
So I'm sure you guys are probably wondering why am I switching out the garden trellis that I already have up there. Well, the garden trellis that's up there right now I just tied to that metal bar. I didn't actually use the spools, these right here. So the benefit of having the spool is that the plant gets so big that it actually climbs up this trellis because this is an indeterminate tomato. For those of you that don't know the difference between a determinate and an indeterminate tomato, uh, there's basically two kinds. Determinate means that it'll get, it'll only get to a certain height and it'll only produce a certain number of fruit. Inde indeterminate tomatoes will basically grow throughout the entire season and it'll continuously produce fruit. So one of the benefits of these garden trellises, it allows the plant to grow to its fullest extent and produce the most maximum amount of fruit possible. So in this case, in case this plant does get big, last year our cherry tomato plants got about eight to eight and a half feet tall and I didn't have them trellis and they actually bent over in half. They were probably closer to nine and a half to 10 feet tall because when they bent over, they were up to my chest. But even though they bent over, the stems didn't break and it produced fruit the entire year. And we probably pulled maybe a thousand cherry tomatoes off of two cherry tomato plants. That's primarily why I didn't grow two this year. I only grew one because worst case scenario, I get 500 cherry tomato plants off of this right here. So, um, so that's why I'm switching it from the tied off area to the trellis holder so that if the plant does climb the entire way up the trellis, I can actually loosen this up and allow the plant to kind of lean over but still grow. Okay, so I just made sure that the trellis was about as tight as I could get it and trimmed off as many of the bottom branches that I need to right now. Here are my blooms. I have one set right there and one set right there. So eventually I will prune everything probably up underneath it, gauge on, see how it grows, and uh, we'll go from there. But the cherry tomato plant is done. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this too well. I'm going to try to do my best to show you here. But remember when I said that there's a time when you could get a sucker off of your tomato plant that would be big enough to replant? Well, I don't know if you can see, but there's one right here. This one right here. It's humongous. <laughs> okay, so i got my knife. Just take it. Cut it off right at the base there. And 
And look at the size of that thing. So that's practically a whole new tomato plant. So basically what you would need to do is you would just need to uh, put it in soil up to about, you know, up to about right here. And that would allow all of this right here to actually root and grow out and it'll create a whole new tomato plant. So if you ever find any suckers that big or larger, you're pretty much good to go to start a whole new tomato plant. So give it a try. See what happens if it does grow for you. Let me know. Leave some uh, comments down below. Uh, I'd be anxious to find out um, if you guys got it to work. Don and I did last year and we probably got like maybe a few extra 20 tomatoes. So it works. It, it's a good method. In fact, if you're low on cash and you only have enough to buy one tomato plant, you could basically just let it grow itself and produce all of these suckers. And then as you take them off, you just expand your tomato garden by just re replanting all of these suckers. So this one's a little small. So if I were gonna transplant that as a new tomato plant from a sucker, I would have let it get a little bit bigger, about the same size as this one right here. And you transplant it up to the leaves right there, and it'll sprout a whole new plant. So I've got a little bit of pruning here to do. Here's a sucker right here. I don't know if you guys can see that one. So this one's a smaller one. You just take your fingernails and you pinch it off just like that, and it won't harm the plant at all. There's a small sucker right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And there's a pretty good size one up here. I don't know if you guys can see that one. Pretty good size one. So that one's big enough I'm going to have to use my knife. Again, you could use this one too. This one's a little small, but it would probably work. All right, so I don't want this growth down here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right at the baseline of my soil right here, I've got a few little branches that have sprouted and I really don't want those there because uh, that's basically going to try to hold, grow a whole new main stem and I don't want that. So again, I'm just going to take my knife. Put that in the compost. You could actually probably use that one too and transplant it. So I'm going to get this plant right here ready to trellis. I don't know if you guys can see right there. I have some blooms that are starting to form right there. And I'm going to get this one ready to trellis. So I'm going to cut a lot of these branches off at the bottom here because it, it's the same premise with everything else. I want the energy to go to the fruit and not to any of these branches that are not being used. I'll probably leave a couple of them on just to see if they'll sprout, but once this really starts to get going and it is really concentrating on my fruit here, I'll probably prune everything down. Plus, it allows for good airflow. So my dowel rods did a real good job of keeping the plant in, in place, but you can see that the stem is starting to get some good girth right here, starting to get some good, really good growth. And it'll actually grow a little bit bigger on top than it will on the bottom and become very top heavy. That's another one of the, the benefits of doing a garden twine trellis. It keeps everything elevated and up and sturdy. Right, so that's 
probably about all the grooming that I'm going to do for now. So let me get this bad boy trellised up. Okay guys, there you go. So my banana pepper, two beefsteak tomato plants, Roma tomato, cherry tomato, and jalapeno pepper plant. They are all trellised. They are all grown, ready to go for the summer. I just have to keep up on top of it. The beefsteak tomatoes, the Roma tomato, and the cherry tomato should keep growing. The peppers are probably going to get a little bit taller, but probably not much more. I just have to monitor it, keep them groomed, and uh, keep you guys up on the progress. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us a whole lot. Uh, the best way that you can help us is to share our videos on all of your social media platforms. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're up to date on all of our upcoming videos. But thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, again, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.